Hi, this is Sonia from An Enthusiastic Reader, and I am here today to catch you up on some of the books that I've been reading over the last few weeks. And I hope you're all doing well, and thank you so much for being here and for hanging out with me for a few minutes. Okay, the first book I'd like to talk to you about is Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. I was watching Sean the book maniac this morning on his Friday read. I don't think he'll mind me saying he didn't really like the great or great circle. I don't know why I keep adding the to it. Uh, he said it was too long and he didn't like the jewel timelines, but I actually thought this was a really good read. It hasn't stuck with me as much as I thought it might because while I was reading it, I was very engrossed in the story. I did care a lot about both protagonists in both timelines and the more recent timeline. Um, I'm very much a sucker for reading uh, any kind of novel about actors and about movie making, about writers, about anything that's the creative process. I like reading about people who engage in the creative process. And yes, she it was very outlandish in a sense because the main character in the modern timeline is a famous disgraced actress and this is her role in portraying a kind of forgotten um, early pioneer pilot of airplanes, um, you know, it seemed a little outlandish, but I bought into it and I liked the old storyline, which was about Marion. I thought the opening of this novel was fantastic because it was about how she and her twin brother were conceived and brought into the world and then essentially orphaned. And they did have an uncle who, who looked after after them, but he was very much a broken alcoholic man who didn't really know how to raise children and really didn't try very hard to make sure that they had a stable upbringing. And so they were kind of left to their own devices. And um, then this led to the free spirit that Marianne became. And, uh, and then the her brother becomes a very famous landscape painter. And I really like that whole creative endeavor that each of them channeled some of their upbringing and freedom that they had as children into these kind of out, uh, wild careers to varying degrees of um, success, success and uh, the ability to handle their lives. So, and it's also a queer novel. The main character, Marion, is gay and discovering that about herself. I don't think it's a novel that's going to stick with me forever, but I enjoyed the process of reading it. I think a lot of people would really enjoy the book. I think Maggie Shipstead handled very well the plot and it, t it did take a lot of characters for it to all come together and little pieces, but it all does come together in the end. And um, yeah, it was a very good read. The next novel I'd like to talk about is Less by Andrew Sean Greer. This novel was really popular a couple of years ago, and it's about writing conferences. It's about an, an author who had one uh, popular novel, and he's trying to keep his career going. And this is also a queer novel, a novel about him and his love life and him not really wanting to commit to someone he'd been with for a long time. And so his partner and he break up and his partner is getting married. And so the main character has to figure out how to get out of going to that wedding. He doesn't want to be a part of it. And so he schedules for himself very serendipitously a series of writing conferences and or lectures and or writing residencies over the course of several months so that he doesn't have to be around while his ex-partner is getting married. It's, it's very funny. It's written in such a exuberant and um, self-deprecating style. I mean, we're laughing with the main character, really not at him, but he's kind of hapless. He's kind of a mess and his name is Arthur Less and he, uh, he has a lot of really uh, fiasco type situations in every single you know, conference that he goes to. I did tear up a couple of times at a couple of parts, so there is some real tenderness there. And But it's just a very short, easy, fun, and gratifying read. Next, next, I'd like to talk to you about a novella. This would be perfect for novellas in November if you're looking for one. It's called Montana 1948 by Larry Brown. This novella takes place in a small town in Montana 
in 1948, obviously, and it's kind of a coming of age story, a coming of reality story for this young boy whose father is the sheriff in the town. His grandfather is one of the main leaders of the town and he has a kind of an iron grip on what goes on in the town. And he has an uncle, his father's brother, who is a physician, who was a war hero. Well, he's very charismatic and he gets his way all the time, whereas the sheriff, uh, the boy's father, is really a lot more uh, clamped down. His personality doesn't shine. He wasn't able to go to war because he had an injury, a birth injury, and so he wasn't uh, eligible to go to war. And so people do look down on him in a sense compared to his brother because he wasn't a war hero. The, um, sheriff, his wife, and the boy, who's the protagonist of the story, have a housekeeper who is a Native American woman who the boy just absolutely adores. And the family is very good to her. They, they like having her as a housekeeper, but she gets very sick. And they say they're going to get the physician brother to come over and look at her. And she has this huge outburst, like, please don't have him. She was refusing to see him. And from there unfolds this very tragic story. And it's a kind of a mystery, a very short, you know, it's a short book. So it's not like it has a lot of twists and turns. It's pretty straightforward narrative, but it's a lot about how fathers and sons interact. It's about corruption in a small town and it's about coming of age. And uh, I apparently Larry Brown has written other novels that are set in a small town and I really would like to read them because I thought he really handled everything very well. Now it was written in 1993. It's probably not as progressive as something that would be written today. Definitely not. But it was still very empathetic and a very good handling of a very tragic situation. So uh, if you're looking for something that you could read in an afternoon, this would be it. I read Brandy Carlyle's memoir called Broken Horses. Uh, I listened to the audiobook, which is probably one of the very best audiobooks I've ever listened to in my life. It's the story of Brandy Carlyle. She's probably in her 30s now, I, um, but she grows up in a very poor family and they have varying degrees of religion in this family. So she's raised with um, a hodgepodge of ideas and then she realizes that she is gay. So it's a very much a coming out or coming to grips with her own identity through art. Uh, she starts writing songs at an early age and she, this whole memoir very carefully just lays out the way that her life went, uh, how her band formed. She has these twin brothers that she still plays with to this day. Um, I happened to see her Saturday Night Live performance before I watched or before I listened to the memoir. And I was just kind of captivated by the, this band that was playing there and I, the song that she sang. And so then I remembered that I think that, that she had done a memoir and it was so good. And she sings like a stripped down acoustic version of songs at the end of every chapter. So they're kind of thematic or a song she wrote and that was talked about during the chapter. And, you know, she started off just playing like busking and making no money at all. And then ends up like just this very last weekend end up, ended up at Carnegie Hall singing Joni Mitchell's entire blue album. And so I'm going to link a couple of video YouTube videos for you to see her performances, but I just, I was kind of captivated and going down this Brandy Carlisle rabbit hole for about 10 days as I was listening to the audiobook and watching her performances on YouTube. But, uh, oh, it was just really one of the best experiences I've had uh, this year with a memoir. The last book I want to talk about is Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen. I love this book. I thought it was very, very, very well done. I was completely engrossed in this very long story. It's, uh, I think, close to 700 pages. It takes place in 1971, and it's about a very dysfunctional family. It's about a mother and a father who are in an estranged marriage. They have four children, three sons and a daughter. And the husband, Russ, is a minister in a kind of a progressive Christian church. And he thinks a lot of himself, or so it 
so it seems as the novel starts, he's a very flawed character. Um, it's written in Franzen's very comedic style. Like there is a lot of comedy in this novel as well as tragedy. And uh, it's a very psychological novel. You really get deep dives into um, five characters, the mother, Russ, the, the mother, Marion, the father, Russ, their older son, Clem, he's in his early 20s and he's in college and they have a son named Perry who is in high school and a daughter, Becky, who's also in high school. And then they have a son that's in elementary school named Judson. He doesn't really play much of a role in this particular novel other than to be there and kind of bounce, the other characters bounce off of him in certain ways. But each chapter is singularly focused on a particular character and it goes character to character and kind of a round circle. Um, we, and we see at the beginning Russ trying to make a connection with one of his parishioners that he really wants to have an affair with. And we see Marion, uh, the mother in a um, psychiatrist's office. And, uh, and then we see what happens with the children. There is a lot of uh, very overt sex in this novel and there's a lot of drug use. So if those are red flags for you for any reason, you may not like it. And you just may not, this novel is definitely not for everyone. Not everyone's going to want to indulge the time it takes to get to know the characters and see how Jonathan Franzen, who's very carefully laid out a story and then the layers peel back on the characters so that you get to see, especially the mother and the father as they were young and what happened to them to make them the way that they are in the present. Um, I just, I thought it was very much set in a particular time and place and mindset in the United States. Um, I was a little kid when I was in 1971, but it felt very, just the whole way that he was able to create this world felt very familiar to me uh, for when I was a kid. Um, just, it was just a very different time. And I loved the characters. I did not, was not bored for one minute in this book. And I can't wait to see what happens when he re writes the next two volumes in this trilogy, um, which he kind of tongue in cheek calls the key to all mythologies, just, just like in Middle March. So, I mean, I think he's making a joke, so please don't read too much into it. You know, Jonathan Franzen is not very good uh, as a communicator of his ideas outside of the novels. So just uh, take what, what he says in any interviews, like with a grain of salt. Anyway, those are the books that I've read in the last few weeks that I have really enjoyed. And I am currently reading and just about finished with Gilead, which is another one of the best books that I read this year. I'm loving it so much. And I'm also reading Ruth by Elizabeth Gaskell. I've kind of slowed down on that because I've been reading so many other things. I would like to finish that by the end of the year. And I'm reading a book called Wintering, which is about, um, they're, they're not essays. It's a nonfiction kind of, it's a memoir, I guess, about ruminations on what winter means to the to the author in various ways and brings in hibernation, a trip to the Arctic, um, a trip to Stonehenge, um, the rituals of winter and why humans need them, but told through her own particular circumstance. Um, I'm enjoying it, I'm not loving it, but it's very short and I would like to finish it by the end of the year. And I have a graphic novel that I would like to finish. And I'm also reading Country Girl, which is Edna O'Brien's memoir with Sean. So that's what I've got going on right now. I have a trip to Chicago coming up in December to visit my daughter who won't be coming home for the holidays. Colorado is in a very dire situation right now with COVID. We are, um, uh, at a like plus 10 positivity rating for COVID. All of our hospitals are almost filled to capacity. There is so much COVID around. Uh, about 70% of us are vaccinated, but still there is so much COVID and so many people who will not wear masks or will not get vaccinated that they are allowing this surge to happen. So it's a little nerve wracking right now because you know at one time we felt like things were really 
you know, slowing down. And now it's just, you know, everyone's got their hair on fire. So I will be getting a booster next week because we have an emergency order that anyone over the age of 18 can get a booster. So I will be doing that. Um, I hope things are better in wherever you live and that things are going well and you're enjoying your fall reading. And um, yeah, I will be making another video. I promise by the end of the year, maybe more than one, we'll see. Um, but anyway, here I am and now it's time to go. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.